every time you have sex with a new woman, that's a new mare in your stable. Just like chimpanzees in the wild. Why Women Cheat in Relationships, part four. It's because women don't want you when you're weak and pathetic and lonely. It was literally like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, you gotta deal with them being club rats. What it's like dating models in Hollywood, part four. I used to see this Russian girl, tall, skinny like a fawn. What's up? I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to have a threesome? Well, I have. And I am still wondering because I have asked so many people and I've just not got the answers that I want. Do you know how many family members I've asked and they have just all given me the same reaction? Blocked. And I messaged Peggy Sue from church. She doesn't like me. I also messaged all of the homies and now it has created a weird dynamic where I don't think I want to message them anymore. They're sending me pictures that I don't want to see. <sighs> Last person I asked was my ex who said my emotional intelligence is that of a three-year-old and you know what? Nobody's believed in me except one person and that person is Russell Hartley. Yes, the world's best TikTok dating misogynist. Just like chimpanzees in the wild. He called women chimpanzees. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to let that one sit with you. He is so good at what he does that I actually decided... <coughs> I'm gonna take down Russ's rules today because I wanna be a guy who gets hella goals. I don't know if I wanna be a misogynist, but seemingly I have to be in order to get goals and also wear suits, which I don't own. So I'm gonna need to shape up, really, because I want to be as good as Russ. My sign also just broke, so now it says Alpha Bolio, which is even better. I just think that's way better than saying Alpha Boy. So as I said, today's topic is on a guy called Russell Hartley, who has made a name for himself on TikTok, creating waves of some sorts. Because as we know, there is no such thing as bad attention. I think the more crazy he's gotten, the more attention he's received. So much so that I looked on his website, and he is clearly delusional. If you just go to the section called Why is everyone talking about Russell Hartley, you will see pictures where he highlights the amount of views other people talking about him have got like Curtis Connor who got 3 million views but the video's called TikTok's worst dating coach he doesn't seem to care another person I think a Sam Collins video the biggest idiot of TikTok is him again as well as TikTok dating coach claims women are horses by Leon Lush Everybody who's gotten views, he's managed to put a red circle around and try and obscure the title so people don't see it. They're not talking about you because they like you, Russ. It's because you call women monkeys, horses, and other variations of creatures that they're not. It's crazy. He's also on TikTok, and uh, somehow he decided to put this up. The number one search is Russell Hartley, and the number two search, Russell Hartley is gross. Over six million people search for that. I think that's very humbling when that many people search for you, calling you gross. Wow. So the thing is, I had to see for myself because I didn't really know what I was in for with this Russell Hartley thing. He has a course and at the end of this video, I might join it. Not because I want to, but because I'm journalist Leo. But I really don't know exactly how bad it is. I have seen a video of him calling a girl a chimpanzee and that is... <sighs> but before we get into the meat of the video, I gotta shout out Raycon for sponsoring the channel and this video. You could always count on Raycon to give you 8 hours of continuous playtime, plus 32 hours of battery life with this charging case. But did you know that Raycons are Siri and Alexa compatible? It makes me feel like I'm a secret agent with an earpiece receiving special commands. Hey Siri, will you be my friend? Hell no brother, I'd rather die in a hole. I also learned that these earbuds are actually water resistant when I left them in my pocket before doing a load of laundry. If you find yourself dancing in the rain like in Ray J's music video One Wish and some Somehow forgot them outside or dropped them in a puddle? You're good. They're built to resist water. Compared to other premium audio brands, Raycon costs about half the price with over 49,000 five-star reviews. Just look at this one from Kathy L, whose grandson bought her a pair. Uh -huh. So visit buyraycon.com slash 16leo for 15% off your order today. Thanks, Raycon. I don't know where they find these people. I think in today's society, they just pop out of holes for some reason. They should go back in. Anyway, before we start the video, if by the end you like it, please do consider subscribing. And follow me on my Instagram at 16leo underscore to give me more people like this to look at because I love it. So you may be wondering why Russell Hartley isn't on a place like, I don't know, YouTube. It's because I genuinely don't think he could talk for more than one minute straight without getting tired. The amount of hand movements this guy does when he talks like this, as if he's doing sign language to a pirate with one eye. I'm not really sure why he keeps talking like this. He also, as you'll notice when he says things, does this for some reason, as if he's like grimacing. I had a date with two women. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did it. I can't figure it out. 
Also, this man is famous or infamous for wearing suits everywhere he doesn't go because most of his videos are taking place in the mirror and I don't think he's going out during it. I'm not sure why he looks like a used car attendant or also a flight attendant who never got to aviate a plane, but this is Russell Hartley. Let's take a look. So this video is called commenting laughing emoji on the thirst traps. I'm not sure why this needs to be done, but there he goes. You know, when you turn off the music, it looks like the most unrhythmic white man in the world. I really cannot imagine this dude going to a club and them not saying, please, Gramps, can you get out? Yep, so uh, as you can see, he commented laughing emojis on everybody's IG and some of them replied. Is this the course? I need to pay for this? Oh my god, you're gonna scam me in broad daylight and you're- I'm the brown one and you're scamming me? What the hell is going on in 2022? Okay, apparently, rule number one is... Uh, rule number one, comment laughing emojis on thirst traps. Not only will that take a long chunk out of your day, which you could be using to do other things and better improving your life so that a girl may actually see you doing something and be like, I am attracted to that. But now you also have the chance of getting rejected by many women. Okay, that's a good start. Ah, let's start with what it's like being a bachelor in real life part one. I, I love the fact that he's wearing a bow tie. I've never seen a, a grown man wear a bow tie unless he was an old man or chaperoning something at a prom. Usually if I see a man in a bow tie, I run because he's magical, but evil magical, not the good kind. So, uh, pfft, you know, I, I just wouldn't trust it. Comments are also turned off for this video, so you know it's good. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part one. Do you like how he pops out from everywhere? Like, <laughs> he didn't just start the video like, hey guys, what's up? He's like, I'm going somewhere in the mirror, but I won't be here for long. Oops, <laughs> that fell down. Now, before I begin, I want to preface it with the fact that there are two types of bachelors. One, which is the majority of bachelors, where they don't get a choice. Bachelordom is sort of thrust upon them because of their lack of options with women. So, incel. I'm not really sure. I, bachelor, involuntary bachelor, in batch. Or like, in, you know, when you eat food. Uh, involuntary bread, for instance, or inbred, as we call it. And two is when you have plenty of options with women, you just choose to remain single. We're gonna be talking about number two. Of course we are, because you're shit. And this is all based on my experience. If you watch some of my previous videos, you already know I've been in throuple situations, I've been in polyamorous situations, I've been in serious, long-term, monogamous relationships. Nice, I love when you have to flex the amount of goals that you had. Hey man, that is totally believable and just really good, bro. I'm so glad that you've been in so many situations. Can you tell me about the shit that I need to know. I'm trying to be a bachelor. And now before we begin, we gotta lay some terms down. To be a true bachelor, you gotta build what I call a stable. A stable is a rotation of women that you have available to you that you can hit up and they can go on dates with. Oh, that's why he called them horses. I got it, because he built up a stable. Not a rotation, like bullets in the chamber, not anything like that, a stable. And then he messages them, hey, right? No, I don't know, I was just, I'm guessing. Builds a stable of horses. So, so far we've learned that you need to put laughing emojis on every thirst traps IG and also build a stable and put some women in them. Shaping out to be a good video. Hang out with, do stuff in the bedroom with, all of that. And you're not dating any of these women, you're still just sort of talking. And I know how this sounds ladies, but trust me, I'm a romantic. I love when you have to say, trust me, I'm a romantic. What does that mean, Russ? It means I know how to buy flowers from shops for people. Russ, the classic archetypal white guy. You'd find him in a Hallmark movie as the villain, wouldn't you? When it's like being a bachelor in real life, part two. Even though there's a 10 minute videos, I guess back then there wasn't, so he had to do them in minute segments. He always still comes out, even though he's filmed the whole video, he's still coming out from the side as if he filmed part one, did something with his life and then came back, which he didn't, because nobody does that. It's amazing how he pretends. This guy is a real pretender and I, it's, it's great, man. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, which is why not just 
meet a woman and then date a woman as soon as you meet her and then that's the deal you just go on down that road you know by the way it's okay to be a bachelor it's okay to want to date a lot of people it's okay to want to a lot of people there's nothing wrong with that inherently it's just the way that you go about saying the certain things living a bachelor lifestyle is not wrong to people who like it living a life of commitment is not wrong to people who like it everybody's entitled to their own situation but What's not good is calling women horses. That's, I think, there is where the, you know, I dip out at that, personally. Which is a perfectly viable road. I mean, go for it. Have fun. The only problem with that method is, is that you might start dating a woman and shut out all your other options. It's called commitment. It's pretty good. And then what happens is that a year later, you come to find out that this woman is a horrible, toxic, terrible person for you. How the hell did you, it took you a year to find that out? Russ, Russ, you gotta look for the signs. If she's throwing vats of toxic, uh, you know, on her face and being like, argh, argh. if she's goggling it and then doing green goblin stuff every day, I think you know she's toxic. I think you know she's toxic. If she puts on makeup and looks like the Joker and starts doing evil laughs, I think you know, Russ, it's been a year, please. Look at the signs. And as a man, if you're having regular sex with multiple women, you have a clearer head and you're better able to select an actual good partner for your life. Is that right? I didn't know that, but also at least disclose that. Like, I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm saying that if you're doing that, make sure the other people know. What he's saying again, not inherently wrong. I think you can date multiple people. I think it's fine. I think that you should be open about it to the people that you're doing with. Hey, uh, just to let you know, I'm keeping my options open. I'm sorry if that hurts and if you don't like me completely okay i i get it but i'm not gonna lie to you and bang multiple people and possibly risk infection other things that just you don't need to have happen in your life for us so let's avoid those problems and be honest with people that's all i'm saying just honesty so when i was younger i was very interested in sexual exploits with women how young russ how young But I digress. So as an eligible bachelor, what's it like to date several women at the same time? Fucking dope. But there is a dark side to it that most people can't handle. And I'm gonna tell you next. Oh my God, that last shot of his face. My God, you should hold the camera further away, bro. Damn, he also, from time to time, says things that we call a hood vernacular, I guess, uh, if you're from... I don't know how to say this without... Oh, he talks black sometimes, and it's the worst. Like, he'll call people dog, but he does it in the white way. He's like, dog, my dogs. <laughs> and then when he just said dope, he was like, dope. Don't say that. Don't. Just please. It's... Ugh. Ugh. Every time you have sex with a new woman, that's a new mare in your stable. Ah, he did call him a horse. <laughs> Behavior. You're going to get fired for that. Don't do that. <laughs> and you want to keep doing this. You're going to have mares coming in and out of your stable. And the reason why they go out is because eventually you get to that conversation where it's like, so where's this going? Horses poop standing up. I don't know if gulls do that. I've never asked. But when the mares come to you eventually, they go, well, where's this going? This is obviously you're not serious about me. This isn't going anywhere. They're going to move on. Okay, if you, now you have a talking horse and we're not going to address the fact that your horse is talking to you, I can't even get this thing to talk to me. This thing been silent the whole time. I would be very scared if you start talking, actually. But what is... Okay, I'm trying to understand the comparison... Woman thoroughbred. So like the thoroughbred is like the, you know, the best horse. And then you get the little rat horses. I don't, the bad horses. So this is what I think. Thoroughbred, inbred, stupid bread. That's the horse sectionals. I don't know what, I don't know. I'm sorry, Russ. I can't, I don't understand why you just called a woman a mare. <sighs> wow. That is just so misogynistic. Even if you've been hooking up with girls every single day, they've only been with just you since last week. You don't know that, first of all. Secondly, what's the problem with them hooking up with another guy if you can hook up with a hundred goals? I don't see the issue. I thought equality is equality, so... Wrong, wrong, wrong. Women of mares, apparently. Wow. That's... okay. A few moments later... You know what would have been even better or a great save if you said women are mirrors and they reflect the best part of yourself? Then I'd be like, shit, you're smooth. God damn. But he didn't say that. I said that. So as I mentioned, there's a sexual obligation. Sometimes you just want to cuddle, yo. Stop. See, there's the black. There's... Sometimes you just want to cuddle, yo. Don't, don't add the yo. Don't, you don't talk like that. You know you don't talk like that. I don't come out here being like, what up, dude? It's me from the 305. What it do, bitch? Talk like how you're meant to talk, Russ. Please don't add the, the vernacular is not yours. 
Don't do it. But I think every man should have a stable so that he can effectively choose his partner with a clear head and not just choose a partner because that's the woman he most recently slept with. I think what Russ is saying, maybe his doo-doo brain doesn't actually comprehend things properly. I think I can, I think I know what he's saying. He's saying that you have to explore your options, so to speak, in a way that maybe the first person you date isn't always the person who's going to be with you for the rest of your life. And in, to some degree, I do believe that he is right. There's 7 billion people in this world. I think that sometimes you need to talk to certain people or have certain experience to know what you do like and what you don't like until you find the right one. In doing so, you 100% can avoid misogyny by calling people horses or other things. You don't have to treat women like they're objects because they're not. Not, and doing so will waste everyone's time and you have to treat people with respect very few women are woke enough to be able to admit that they don't know what they want my advice is don't ask a fish how to catch a fish ask a fisherman nice yeah why would you ask a girl what she wants she doesn't know what you want you know what she wants you standing there in a bow tie in a fucking mirror talking to yourself in a house that you probably don't own and if you do Good for you, bro. You, I know that your suit is Prada and all that shit, but the more designer your suit is, the less people are going to care. I'm sorry if you think this is the right way or correct way to live life, but maybe sometimes you have to be honest enough with yourself to know that you don't know. And maybe the goals do know. I can tell you from my experience, I don't always know what's correct. And sometimes I need the help of someone who just knows a little more than me, and that happens to be a goal. So. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of pushback from women on this, but frankly I don't care. Don't listen to them, fellas. Women are juggling men far more than you would believe. They're juggling balls. That's why they all use Snapchat. That's exactly what it is, Russ. There, everybody, Snapchat, Snapchat. Okay. Oh, look at all these goals, Russ. Oh, they're all everywhere, Russ. They're everywhere. Oh shit, Russ. They're... Look at all these, so many people, Russ. Is everyone just messaging me? What the hell is going on, Russ? All these girls just using the Snapchat to keep their options open. That's why Snapchat was designed. It's a shame that you know this by being on Snapchat. And it completely disregards your point. Snapchat's straight up for hoeing. That's it. Why are you on it? So that they can send pictures like this. Never do that again. Never do that again, Russ. Don't ever make that fucking face again. That one with your tongue sticking out, don't do that ever again, please. To six guys at the same time, and then pretend that they don't do that shit. I'll do that to six goals right now. Fuck it, I'll put it on my Snapchat right now. I'm sending that to everyone, I don't even care. I sent it to everyone, it's, it's added to my story. By the way, follow me on my Snapchat. They're just trying to find the highest value man that they can align themselves with, plain and simple. I mean, that's just nature. That's just survival. You know what didn't survive? Your fucking eyebrows. What happened to them? What is that? What the f is that? Women are bigger players than men by far. Oh, what's that? Nothing, I didn't say anything. You don't believe me? I didn't say that. Bust open any girl's Instagram. I'm not busting open anything. The only thing I bust in the last week is a couple nuts. Sorry, that's just true, but come on. All of these posts that women make on Instagram and TikTok where they're just presenting to men are just for them trying to source prospective mates. What? You, you lie to me. I'm gonna write that down, Russ. Oh shit, Russ is opening my mind out. He's he's dropping T-bomb, he's dropping truths. Look at uh, IG pictures. You mean to tell me people go on IG and post pictures of themselves, their faces, and their bodies to look good so that they could get attention? I thought it was just for their grandmas. I learned something new every year. Just like chimpanzees in the wild. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There it is. Just like chimpanzees in the wild. Gen Z, more like chimpanzee. <laughs> it's not funny. God damn it. Why would you say that to anyone? Why would you call anyone that? That's a human. Oh my god. D is, does anybody seriously like this guy, by the way, in the comment section? Do you like him? Do you like the way he looks? Do you like the way he's talking? Am I wrong? Or am I right to be a little weirded out by the fact that this man is saying the things that he's saying? So as it turns out, Russ is right. One of the things that he does really well is dresses. I mean, you need to be in a suit everywhere. There's nothing quite like the feeling of taking a fat dump in a suit. But let me listen to why women cheat in relationships. Because the thing is, I keep getting cheated on, even though I'm not even dating anyone, just in my dreams and stuff. So please, go on. Oh man, he walked there like he was embarrassed, like it was the principal's office, and they're like, Russ, why are you perving on girls again? Why, why do you have a hole in your locker room? Why are you, come on, Russ? And he walked in like, 
If you guys thought that last video was controversial, wait till you get a load of this one. <laughs> <sighs> he unbuttons his fucking shut. What even was that, Russ? He just needs something to do with that other hand at all times. <sighs> It's like it's sentient, it's got a life of its own. Why women cheat? Oh my god, in relationships. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Why women cheat in relationships, part one. Let's begin with a short story. Let's do it. One weekend, I'm in a bar in Studio City called Firefly. It's a really cool place. This is like a library on the inside, and it's like fire pits. It's just like kind of classy, you know? It's a really horrible situation because the people could now burn the books. There's a reason fire in library doesn't. After chatting with him a bit, I find out that the blonde is there to go on a date with a guy she doesn't know and her brunette is her friend and she's just sort of there for emotional support and to make sure I guess that the guy isn't like- Like you. So we're chatting a bit and I jokingly say to the blonde, I said, is that guy gonna get a second date before I get my first one? <laughs> just joking around, of course. Just joking around, of course. Let me do the ugliest face I can find. Just looking around, of course. I gave her the- I gave her the look, guys. And it was on like Donkey Kong. Why women cheat in relationships, part two. So the guy shows up to the bar. And I know you guys were hoping he was gonna be like a catfish or something like this. But no, it was okay. He said he came to the bar, he looked at the guy, he talked to all of us, like, yeah, it was cool. And he grabbed the blonde and, you know, they whisked her away to dinner. So it's just me and the brunette, and we sit there and talk for like, two hours. So now's the time where we gotta bounce. What does this man do in his life? What do you think he actually does? That he has so much time to sit in library bars where they tell him, Russ, you have to start reading the books. You can't bring old fashions into a library. There's kids here. And he says, that's why I'm here. And then they call the cops. This dude has so much time to do things. I just don't know what the hell he actually does. I don't think I've ever sat in a bar that long and not had work to do. I, I'm a pretty busy person. I, I have a business now. So I feel like if he has a business, you gotta be working. Man. To which she responds, I need you to know that I have a boyfriend. Without responding, I reached for my drink and I finished it. I put it back down. And I looked over to her and said, he's going to be jealous of the fun we're about to have. And then she grabbed a pole and, and said, Russ, you didn't, you didn't hear what, hear I, just what I, just said, I just said, did you, buddy? Did you, buddy? buddy. I said, I, said, I, have, I have a boyfriend. boyfriend. And ultimately she came back to my house that night. Now it's not news that women will absolutely hook up with you even if they're in a relationship, if they feel like you're, you're gonna be cool about it and not be needy and all over her. Not every girl will do that, firstly. Secondly, you don't have to, in the comment section, exercise the lack of trust that I'm seeing because this man is playing on the minds of men and many men feel like they cannot trust a woman. And the only reason you feel like you cannot trust someone is when you feel like you're not good enough for them. Have you ever been so secure with yourself that you've dated someone and said, if you fuck up, that's great. I'll find someone else. Have you ever felt that way? You should. It's amazing. You should learn to feel a great self-worth about yourself, whether you're a guy or a girl or whatever your orientation is. You need to feel that self-worth because then you can let someone go who doesn't deserve you. If anybody's willing to cheat or willing to break your trust or respect or boundaries, fine, let them go. But I guarantee you, there's no such generalization as a girl will do this. I could bet my life on it for the person that I love and care about, wouldn't do that. A very good friend of mine, tall, athletic build, very handsome, had, he didn't work, but his wife did. His wife was a high functioning lawyer at a firm. She was a partner. She worked, you know, 80 hour weeks and he just sort of sat at home chilling. She worked 80 hour weeks, God. God damn. This woman literally walked every single day, then went to sleep, then walked again. He was the leader of his social circle. He was very alpha male characteristics, but he, and he was a very good looking guy. His wife fucking hated his ass because she thought he was lazy and kind of a loser. The, which is why she Aww. married him, of course. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, marry someone because you hate them, you loser. And she ends up cheating on him with the other male partner at that law firm. And they ultimately got a divorce. And you know what? She didn't even need a loyal. She just called a new guy. I know. I worked at a big corporation for almost a decade. I can't tell you how many men that would go into work with their head hanging low and they would just give their wife to their paychecks at the end of the week. Sad. I don't know what that has to do with anything. But again, the misogyny is getting stuck in his brain. He's got M brain or something. Something. He's insane in the M brain, if you know what I mean. What he's trying to say, and I think this rings true for just any person, again, not just goals, whatever your orientation is, I think that it's nice to have someone who can lead you or who can, in your moments of uh, peril or like where you don't know what to do, it's nice to have another person who has a plan. Whether that plan or is right or wrong, I don't know. But it's nice to have someone who you can find comfort in, who knows themselves, whatever that may entail. You don't have to necessarily know what you're doing with your life. You just have to know that you are this type 
type of person, there is a lot of uh, love and leeway in knowing who you are because it allows you to put yourself out there at the truest form. You're not going to change or become a different person. Knowing yourself is important. Okay, now I know why women cheat. Let me listen to why men cheat because... You know, as he said before, you never ask a fish how to fish, you ask a fisherman. But now he's asking the fisherman how to be a fish? I don't understand this man's analogies. It's horses, chimpanzees, and fish. He's a very animal-based person. I have a feeling that he gets all of his knowledge of humanity from Animal Crossing. Why men cheat in relationships, part one. So after my last series about- Oh, I love it. He's wearing a turtleneck and a suit. He's like Justin Timberlake. Why don't you do why men cheat in relationships? And I thought to myself, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. It's up here, Russ. The brain is up here. This is not the brain. This is a chin. You'll get there. Let's start out with a story. I actually met this girl in the parking lot of a Walmart. I was actually leaving with a couple of bags and some girl runs up to me and taps me on the shoulder and says, Hey, my friend thinks you're cute. Because you're so good at shopping. You're so, you know when you're so, you know how hot you have to be to shop? You, you just shop. I'm like putting things in groceries and girls are like, take the cereal and I'm like, uh, uh. <clears throat> and girls are like, that's primitive, I like that. But I turn around and look and see this girl dressed head to toe in a Hooters uniform. And I was like, oh my God, that's my dream. Is it? You should go to the Hooters then. I <laughs> think you'll find your dream every day. What the hell? <laughs> so I hit it off with the Hooters girl. I mean, that's what I do, baby. <laughs> okay, don't ever say that again. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the College of Charleston, like at the time, girls outnumbered guys something like seven to one. And it was a liberal arts college, so like half the guys were gay. It was literally like shooting fish in a barrel. <sighs> Russ has now called women mares, chimpanzees, and said it's like shooting fish in a barrel. He looks like a guy I would find and ask, uh, you know, how many more do you have in stock? So he just, he doesn't look like a threatening man. I didn't know that this was this. And I studied mathematics and I was like the only guy in that department that didn't look like fucking Frankenstein. Well. And there were some really cute like foreign exchange girls that were at the college just also study mathematics. Russell, we don't like you. I only study for mathematics. Here's the probability of you getting with me. Fat fucking zero, bro. I don't know if you know uh, calculus. You can calculate these nuts, son. I'm not going to date you. And these girls are like Eastern European, like Russian, Romanians, like descendants. I was right. I, I didn't know that <laughs> the Russian part. Wow. Descendants of gladiators. Yeah, you certainly look like a gladiator. You've got all the trappings of one. You look like a man who goes to the gym to look at people walk out. So that's good. So I'm studying. I'm spending a lot of time with this one particular girl. You always think in the back of your mind, whether you admit it or not, you're thinking, hmm, something could happen here. And something absolutely did. This man oozes sexuality. When I see him, I'm just like, oh. Well, he's going to take my girl away probably kidnap her. That's the only time you'll ever get her. What are you talking about, Russ? I don't... Uh, this man is like what I like to call charm-free. I am I would love to see him in an environment actually pick up someone. I would love to see this man go to work because I just... I don't believe it. So needless to say, they both found out. It exploded in my face. It was horrible. Uh, the, I found out later that the girl that I was living with was actually a, a real stripper and a little bit unstable. Yeah, no, there's a lot of things going on, Russ. She was a hooters, now she's a stripper. She's a nurse. Listen, if you're gonna... Uh, talk um, this amount of shit, you might as well write a book. At least that way people can be like, oh, even though Russ has no actual skill, he's got a big imagination, you seem to have that. And if it really happened, you know, good for you, but I don't want to hear about it. Your voice is grating. I'm sorry, this man, I really wanted to learn how to get a threesome, Russ. I haven't learned anything except don't do everything that you've said to do. But why young men cheat in relationships is simply because they don't know any other way to have more sexual experiences and they absolutely should if they're gonna kinda know what they want in their life. Otherwise, they're gonna resent the woman they end up with. Which is bad and also somewhat true. Although, if someone is willing to commit to another person, then all you have to do if you don't want to be with that person is say the words, I don't want to be with you. Don't get into a relationship if you want to have those sexual experiences and then discover who it is that you might end up with. Just be honest. I want to do this. I want to explore this before I settle down. If someone hates you for being honest, you can't change that. That's that you can't be a perfect person. Nobody's asking you to. But being an honest person at least helps and saves trouble. That's it. 
That's it. Cheating is derived on lying. There's no honesty in cheating. And having sex with multiple women so that you can sort of experience that and kind of learn that it's a bit overrated. Oh, so it's a bit overrated. Russ admitted it. So what are we doing here? Why are you teaching people this? I don't get what Russ's point of view is sometimes. I just don't understand this man and I don't want to anymore. What it's like dating models in Hollywood? Part one. So I love models, but for more than just the obvious reasons. Okay, so now Russ is going to teach us how to date models. I really want to know because I want to date a model because I'm sexy. Because models in Hollywood between gigs have a ton of free time on their hands. A lot of them are just chilling and waiting around, so they're free basically whenever. She's not walking. It's not a good model then, is she? Which at first seems sad, but then at the same time, these girls are like traveling the world, going on these lavish vacations, uh, partying with A-list celebrities. I mean, you really shouldn't feel sorry for them. This is, I mean, they have an amazing lifestyle. You know, if you ever want to not perpetuate the stereotype or bring the power to a more even keel level, it's the same thing with OnlyFans. Not that there's anything wrong with people who do it, by the way. Massive respect for people who do it. I, I don't hate the player. I hate the game, by the way. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. If there's no demand for it, then there's no supply for it. So if you stop paying for her, maybe you'd at least stop perpetuating that stereotype. That's all I'm saying, Russ. Oh, I gotta go to a really awesome club tonight at 11 o'clock. And that's exactly why I'm boys with all the promoters and club owners in LA. Because one, I'm not waiting in line. I've never waited in a line, not once. And two, that's where all the hot girls go. You never waited in a line, Russ. The hell do you do on roller coasters? You just push the kids out the way. Never. My way, little Timmy. I gotta go in that roller coaster. You never waited outside the club ever. How would you possibly get in the club before you knew the people? Don't you have to meet them? And to meet them, you gotta wait in line because you don't already know them? Or do you just know everybody who made every club ever? You're like not only an A-list, you're an S-list celebrity. You're like top tier, Jesus tier. You're like literal Jesus if he came back. Instead of coming back in a robe and some sandals, he came back in some skinny jeans, a tight t-shirt, and a ciggy in his mouth saying, get inside the club, baby. Is that what we're talking about? Okay, I'm just, I'm not trying to say you're lying. I'm just saying that you are. And meeting hot girls at clubs is great. I mean, you gotta deal with them being club rats because usually they're underage. Usually they're underage, are they, Russ? Usually they're underage. God, I don't know if I can write that one down, Russ. I think you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, brother. I used to see this Russian girl tall, skinny like a fawn. Like a fawn! The span is... He watched Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and said E-I-E-I-Ho, and then did it. I used to see this Russian girl tall, skinny like a fawn, beautiful. I mean, Russian girls are like descendants of gladiators. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. That would be Greek. And this girl would go on dates with absolute ballers in LA, and they'd go to nice places. These, she would tell these guys to bring her home, but she would say to bring her to my house. Bring me home to his house, this little shitty. Bring me him to his house. I need to go to his house. You take me in your Uber. You take me or you not take me, I don't know. Bring me to little scrawny man house. He has Prada suit, it might fit me. And the guys were bringing it over to my house thinking it was her house. And then she said, oh, I had a nice night. Kiss him on the cheek, Mwah. And then she'd come inside to my house, put leftovers in my fridge and take her dress off as she was walking up the stairs to greet me for the evening. I'm putting leftovers in fridge because at the club, they give me a lot of food to eat and I have to take it home. I can't eat it, my tummy get bloated. I have to put it in the Russell fridge and freezer and microwave. Then I undress, I feel bloated like whale. I just go in the ocean, but bathtub. I say, Russell, come fish me out in 10, 20 minutes. I'm going to sleep now. And Russian girls already have a pretty cold demeanor, but this girl was a stone cold killer. Russell, I'm going to kill. <laughs> I'm going to blow tranquilizer dart in your face if you don't pick me up, brother. Ultimately, that relationship ended because she came knocking on my door one night at like 2.30 in the morning. She was sloppy drunk and I had another girl in my bed and she's like, can I come in? I'm like, it's not a good time. She was like, do you have another girl in there? I was like, yep. So I don't really know what that was. I think it was a flex, but also somehow the saddest story about a man who gets a girl who has no respect for him. So that's, that's lovely. Rules for picking up girls in clubs. Rule number one. First things first, if you even want to play the game, you got to get into the club. You can't even hate from outside the club. You can't even get in. Chris Brown said that, but he said it to this guy. And I've only ever waited in line one time. But you said you never waited in line ever in the last video, Russ. You've been lying to me and I don't like it. I see guys coming out to LA, coming out to Hollywood, trying to go out with their boys just to be stuck in line for the next hour and a half or maybe even all night. And I hate to say it because it does have a lot to do with the way you look and it is. Well, 
what's his TikTok? I see guys coming out to LA, coming out to Hollywood, trying to go out with their boys just to be stuck in line for the next hour and a half or maybe even all night. That's how he talks. That's a So the first rule is never stand in line. Go there one night when it's open and be the first guy there. Once inside, ask for the manager and say, hey, I love what you've done with the place. It was nice to meet you, Sam. So the next time you say, oh, Sam knows I'm coming, you'll get in every time. Hey, can I meet the manager? No, of course not. Why? The manager's not even here. Why would the manager be at this specific venue right now? Why would he be here when you're here? Apparently, you have to meet the manager just so that you can get out inside every club. Do you know how time-consuming and stupid that is? All right, then. Some of you guys are really messing up when it comes to approaching women online. This is the first time he's not in a suit and looks like a dad. It's all dating apps if you ask me. The only difference between dating apps and say other social media is that you don't really know if they're single or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the most forced lies. It's like someone punched his gut and that reaction he laughed. Because girls aren't gonna put their boyfriends in their social media. That's just bad marketing. That's not bad marketing and most girls do that stupid, sorry, lovely thing where they put their initials in the bio so you know that, oh, oh A, P, B, P, G, T, E, B. Cool, I, I think it's actually even better. Sometimes putting the link in the bio being like taken. Taken. Please don't message me some weird stuff. Great, great idea. I th if I get a girlfriend, I'm gonna do that just so people know. Oh, look at that! Melissa got engaged. Unfollow. And the girls know this. They know that if they put their man in their profile or whatever, it's like they're gonna lose a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand followers in a snap. Yeah, well, maybe they don't need those people because if those people only wanted one thing from them, maybe they weren't meant to follow them in the first place. It's a dating app. They're all dating apps. I'm gonna show you how to stand out. Please show me how to stand out. So they're all dating apps. So every single girl only wants attention, even those who have photography pages and have almost no pictures of them or only their art or skill set. That is all they're worth. Thanks, Russ. Love that. Rules to sliding in the DMs. Rule number one. Before you even begin to try to hit up girls, you need to first work on your presentation. Is he screaming or is it just me? It's, it's, it's not. It's pretty loud, right? Rules to sliding in the DMs. This man is, it's an echoey bathroom and it's just louder with his vocal booming presence over there. Is this why they kick him out of that library bar? Russ, you're screaming again. What? Okay, get out. Your pictures in your profile should be of you. You should be the center of the focus. You should look attractive. You should show that you're living an exciting and interesting life. What if you're ugly and you live a horrible lifestyle like me? What do I do, Russ? Please help me out. That's gonna be the thing that makes a response. And this is hilarious. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, how many times did he have to practice that one? He was like, action, Russ. And this is like, mm, crap. Action, Russ. <laughs> Come on, Ross, come on. <laughs> this is a hilarious thing that you do. The amount of practice and effort that went into his fake personality, I'm almost sorry for him. Yes, but no selfies in the bathroom. Yeah, only videos. The best way to communicate that is to be fun, funny, and witty. That's enough to communicate that you're smart as hell, or at least smart enough. Something fun and funny. God damn. Both? Jesus Christ. I, I don't know if I could do both. I, usually it's funny, but it's not fun. Oh. You, look at that. Look at the look at my back line. Are you kidding me? Look at my back line. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. Damn. Damn, Damn boy. boy. Damn, Damn boy. boy. He fit. Well, that's my ass, but like, look at my, okay, I guess mine doesn't fit too well. Prada head to toe, as you can see there. Uh, Prada. Oh, there you go. Prada. Okay. Uh, Helen Stein's, 35 bucks. It's a sweatpants. I think I got it for $18. Prada, except for the shoes. These are last season's Bashimis. They're a little dirty. I don't even have shoes. I just got socks on, $9.99. I don't have a tie. I guess that's the drip. I just wanted to bring up this point because Russ always does the drip check. And I want you to know that if you're a guy and you're trying to pick up a girl, you don't have to wear expensive things. I think if a girl really likes you, she'll care about you. There's something I've been neglecting to tell you guys, and I think I need to flex. This earring costs more than his whole suit combined. I don't even want to tell people the price. I don't care that anybody sees it. I did not get it for anyone. I do not care. I don't think a girl cares. I don't think people who really care about you care about your monetary status. I think that they'll like you for you. So please, you don't need to wear a suit every day if you're not comfortable in it. Wear something that makes you feel comfortable and something where you can feel your best in, and that way you can do your best. Please, don't worry about what this man's saying. You don't have to literally go out every single day. Just like a girl doesn't have to go out to the grocery store wearing heels when necessary. 
That's all I'm saying. Now, we've looked at a lot of Russ, and I think it's time to finally look at the testimonials, because I love his rules. I think he's fantastic, and I want to get his blueprint. I'm going to just email myself. Okay, so I'm sending it. Oh my god, before we can help, we need to better understand your situation. I've been in at least one long-term relationship or marriage. Sure. I feel intense anxiety, and I am unable to approach attractive women. Sure. I am confident. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yes! No! I got it! You're on the wait list! Hi, Brittany here from Get Coaching. Just letting you know that I've just placed your name in the waiting list for the next available masterclass, How to Get a Girlfriend in 42 Days, if you want one. Here's a recap of what's included. Week 1, Text Game Guide. Week, oh, sorry, Week 0, they start from 0. Week 1, How to Overcome Anxiety. Week 2, How to Groom and Style Yourself to be more attractive. Week 3, How to Master Conversation and Body Language. Week 4, How to Effectively Approach Women. Week 5, How to Effectively Approach Women. Week 6, How to Have a successful first date takes six weeks before you go on a date oh you get bonus how to always appear confident and two uh, how celebrities and male models always have perfect skin i'm clicking the link now and it looks like i'm in the wrong place i tried so hard to get russell hartley's courses i wanted to be a man who could finally get what other men get i wanted to be like Russell Hartley. But unfortunately, it just seems like he doesn't want me to be as good as him. I just want to be as good as Russell Hartley because I think it's important. So sad that I tried joining and couldn't get through because Russ won't allow me. He knows that my powers will be too strong at that point and I'll be like Thanos if I snap the panties just fly off. Alas, my dating with women remains nothing and I am no closer to getting that threesome than I was at the start of this video. This video has taught me nothing about myself other than the fact that maybe I'm a good person for not calling women animals, but then again, maybe he's a bad person for doing that. I think the best thing I can say is honestly, guys, girls, and everyone else, if you're looking for a partner, the best thing you can do is realize your self-worth. If you focus on yourself, you might just find that person. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to look at someone even worse the next time. Clue? Who's that Pokemon? His name rhymes with Mandrew Great. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she know. Baby.